Hey, what's going on YouTube? I just got a set of these really cool anchor attachments from Darko and they are the wrong color. So I thought I'd take advantage of this timing to show you guys how I change a lot of my accessories and my J-Cups over to the red and black theme that I have behind me. These guys here from Rep, as you can see, have been changed to red. And I've told a lot of guys on Instagram how to do this. A lot of people have, have copied my idea on this and how I've done it. And I wanna show you guys how to do it so everybody can uh, you know, basically customize your accessories on your racks or in your gym, show you the easy way to do it, show you how I do it. So in the spirit of that, I'll show you everything in the gym that I have painted and then we'll get to painting these and I'll show you how I do it. All right, so we'll just go around the gym and I'm gonna show you a few things that I have painted. And first of all is this bench right here. This bench is actually from DeWalt and you can see the DeWalt lettering on it right there. And it came obviously DeWalt yellow, which just doesn't work with our gym theme. So I ended up painting this red. Now, because this is a powder coated painted steel framed um, bench, or I guess this is the same as their shelving material, you can use any type of paint on this, but I opted to use uh, Plasti Dip Red. And the reason for that is it matches all my other accessories and it gives it kind of a matte finish, which is what I like, but you can use any paint on something like this. So let's move around the gym and we'll find some more stuff. So again, these Rep J Cups here, all my Rep J Cups have been painted red. Normally they have a stainless insert here and Stainless and say bare aluminum can be a little bit hard to paint and just be, because it requires a special method or process where you need to uh, do like an etching primer. Um, however, if you use Plasti Dip like I did, you can paint right over top of stainless steel and it works really well. It gives it a nice matte finish and doesn't require too much of a special prep. So I'm going to show you that process in a minute. We'll keep moving forward. These Irwin rollers here were originally gunmetal gray and they just didn't uh, stick out enough for me and didn't really fit the theme in the gym. At one point I was gonna go with a gunmetal gray theme and kind of opted back to, st to stick with the red and black theme, which just works. And it's the theme we've had for, I don't know, two or three years now, so we'll stick with it. Um, but you can tell it's got that same matte red finish and it does have some wear on it, etc. but those are painted in the Plasti Dip as well. Now moving up here to the Rep back plate, that was also painted in Plasti Dip as well. Again, that was stainless, so that was uh, pretty easy to paint, and I'll show you a couple pictures on how I did that. And I actually painted it before I even put it on the rack, so uh, there was no question that that was gonna get painted for sure. And we'll talk about the painting process in a minute, but we'll just kind of cruise around and see if there's anything else. Over here we got more J-Cups right there, and then of course the Massonomics uh, guy here, which is kind of on the back side of the lighting, but you can see that's been also painted to match. So, all right, now we'll get to the actual painting all part. Right, so the first tip to painting with Plasti Dip is making sure your Plasti Dip can is warm. It definitely have to heat it up. I just leave it out in the sun for about an hour before I'm gonna paint, or you could try to put a heat gun and heat it up, but I'd be very careful using the heat gun because these things will explode if you overheat them. So um, yeah, I just put it out in the sun for a little bit. It's winter right now in California, still, still warm enough to paint here, but first tip is warm up your can before you use it. All right, so we got the can warm. I probably should have done this first, but obviously you gotta disassemble whatever you're gonna paint. And in this case of these Darko anchors, the black part here appears to be uh, powder coated already. So I'm gonna leave that. I just wanna change this white part here over to red. Now, this is actually a piece of plastic. It's probably UMHW or something. So it'd be very hard to paint this um, with a normal paint. You definitely wouldn't be wanting to powder coat this because you gotta heat products up to get powder coat and everything. Plastic just doesn't powder coat so very well, um, at least not that I'm aware of. So 
Plasti dip might be your only option on this or getting a new piece made, which probably wouldn't be that hard. Or if you had a 3D printer, you could obviously print another one. But I mean, you've spent the money to buy these. You probably want to just paint this and keep the piece that you paid for. So the next thing I'm going to do is disassemble these. And that's just as simple as getting an Allen wrench and a socket for that. We'll find out what size those are. All right, so we've got our pieces disassembled. I just put them in a cardboard box like this. Um, it doesn't really matter what you use. Just you don't want to get Plasti Dip all over the place. So I'm going to prop that up a little bit like that. Plasti Dip definitely paints nicer if you can lay your, your whatever you're painting down horizontally. And again, shake your can up really good. And when you're doing this, try to get your, your parts to lay horizontally. The problem is, is if you if you paint them and they're upright like this and you start painting this edge here, you're going to get runs really quickly. So I always try to lay them down if you can. I mean, that's not always possible, but definitely what I recommend. One more thing when you're painting these here. Now the barbell is going to sit up on this upper edge and there's nothing I can do here to keep that from rubbing the paint off. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of paint I use. So I am going to paint that top edge, but I expect it to just wear off. All I'm really looking for is just that outer line that basically that outline in red, just to highlight the color theme. And I would imagine Darko will probably come out in the future with uh, color options. I'm sure. Um, I don't know. He's probably listening to this thinking, no, I'm going to keep it white. So everybody's got his theme, but um, you know, I'm sure that's going to happen in the future. So, all right, let's see what happens now with your first coat, no matter what you're painting with Plasti Dip is you want to go light on your first coat. You do not want to go super heavy. You're just trying to get a very, very light coat on there. And the biggest mistake people make is they paint too heavy of a first coat. And that's it. That's what I'll do for my first coat is just that much right there. Declog the can, just spray it upside down for a second. And then take your can, go put it back out in the sun or in a warm spot in the house and keep it warm the whole time. We're going to come back in about, about, you know, eight or nine minutes and I'm going to stop the video and hit it with another coat. When you're painting with Plasti Dip, it's not like regular paint. You're just layering plastic on top of plastic and your final coat is the one that you're going to do a little bit heavier, but you're going to be putting like four to five coats on at least of this stuff. It's not like paint. I mean, again, it's a plastic. So yeah, just be very patient with it. And you can see that light coat there. You can still see the white showing through. And that's the biggest mistake people make with Plasti Dip is they go too heavy on the first coat. It doesn't adhere very well. And then it just falls off. So again, really light on your first coat. Your last coat, you can go a little bit heavier because now it's going to actually melt into the actual existing Plasti Dip on the, on the parts. So, all right, we'll come back in 10 minutes. All right, so on this coat here, this is my second coat. You can go a little bit heavier. Don't go super crazy, but you can definitely go a little bit heavier on your second coat. I'm just gonna clean that off. And again, we'll let that dry. And again, between coats, wait at least 10 minutes. Um, if it's a really hot day, you might get away with five minutes, but if it's a really cold day, you might have to wait 20 minutes. So we'll do probably at least five coats on this side and then we'll flip it over and we'll do the other side. All right, stay tuned.
right guys, this is gonna be a quick tip for you guys. If you are painting something that is like this, this is aluminum, a piece of aluminum, or you've got a piece of stainless, it's very hard, unless you get it powder coated, to get the paint to stick to this long term. And that's why I end up using Plasti Dip in a lot of places in the gym. When you've got a piece of stainless trim, you can use this. It sticks to it because it just basically, it kind of shrinks around it and creates a plastic layer. It's easy to remove. If you don't like the color, you can change it down the road. However, if you do want to paint something with some regular paint like this can here, and you've got a piece of aluminum or stainless, there's a quick process that you got to go through that'll help you basically, unless you get some etching, comp, you know, um, etching primer or something like that, the best chance you have is going to be to use something like a scotch Bright pad. This is a gray one. You can use also like a red one and you'll want to just basically scuff it up. And I would recommend either the red or the gray. Red's a little more aggressive. And if it's something that's got a lot of shine to it, you'll probably want to use the red one and scuff it up really good the whole area that you're painting. And then once you're done that, get some dish soap or a really good degreaser and clean the part, let it dry. And right before you're about to paint it, use something like an invisible glass cleaner or some, or some sort of um, you know paint prep, spray that on there, clean it up, and you'll be good to go. And that's if you wanna paint a permanent paint solution on some of your gym stuff. And that'll give you your best chance at keeping it uh, adhering to the aluminum or stainless. If it's steel, you can do the same process and steel obviously is gonna take the paint really well, but anything that's aluminum or stainless is a little bit harder to paint in terms of it'll paint, but will it last, will it be as durable? And of course, if you can get it powder coated because powder coating is almost like a, it's like a plastic coating that they bake on and they obviously use a temperature controlled system and, and uh, that is always the best option. But if you're you know, DIY, you're doing it at home like I am and you don't have time or you wanna spend the money on powder coating, there are some options out there. And again, that's why I like the Plasti Dip. All right, we'll come back to the project and I'll show you what's going on with that. All right, so we're back on the anchor project. And remember, these were made out of UHMW, uh, so they're plastic. So the Plasti Dip adheres to them really well. There's no reason, you don't need to take the scotch Bright like I was talking about in the prep stage to, to prep these up because again, they're just plastic. So the Plasti Dip will naturally want to adhere to it. I don't know how long it's gonna last. And up in this section here where the barbell sits, I don't expect it to really last very long up there. Obviously the knurling of the barbell is gonna wear that off, but I'm not worried about that too much because you're not gonna see that as, as much as what you're gonna see like this. I'm just looking for matching the gym's color theme. So I'm gonna get these assembled and it's been three days uh, since I started this video and painting these and the reason is it's middle of winter right now and it's cold out in the garage. I actually had to bring these into the house and paint these in the house. I don't recommend you do that because the Plasti Dip is very, um, it, just, it just doesn't smell good at all. It's very, very toxic smelling. Um, but temperature is key when you're painting. You really need to be above 60 degrees and that's the temperature of the part and the, the can itself. Remember, you, the, the warmer you can get your can, even if you put it in hot water, the better it's gonna spray and the nicer it's gonna look. On a piece like this, this is actually textured already and I don't think it'll pick it up in the video, but this piece of UMHW has texture in it, so I wasn't looking for a perfectly smooth finish, but if you were looking for a perfectly smooth finish, the key is keeping your can really warm, at least 75 degrees on the can temp, and then on your last, maybe last two coats, layer it on really wet and thick. Make sure it's laying flat horizontally if you can, and it'll just glass over, and then that last coat will fill in all the imperfections, and you, sh you should come out with a really smooth um, finish on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble these, and I'll show you how the finished product looks. All right, so thanks for watching the video on how to paint your accessories on your power racks or you're in your gym or however you wanna do it. And there's lots of videos about this out there, but those are my tips for doing it. Uh, these turned out 
really good. I'm pretty happy with them. Again, we'll see how they hold up, but uh, I have talked to Darko and it sounds like he's gonna come out with some different colors eventually for these inserts here. So I'm gonna do a separate video on these and get these set up in the rack. But thanks for watching the video and thanks for subscribing, supporting all that good stuff. So appreciate you guys and we'll see you on the next one. See ya.